read a few verses from Psalms 27. It says like this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Let us look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Creator of the whole universe, Creator of humans, we bow our heads in total reverence for giving this wonderful day in our lives. We thank you, O God, for this wonderful privilege that you have given to us to worship you, O God. And O God, this morning, even as we bow our heads to the throne of grace, we want to claim your promise which says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of you. And acknowledging your very presence, O God, we submit ourselves into your hands and pray, O God, let our praises be acceptable in thy sight, that, O God, lead us in worship, in truth and spirit. Unto your hands we commit each one of us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, in the opening of our worship service, shall we all rise and sing a beautiful hymn written by Isaac Ward, hymn number 28 from the Methodist hymnal. The words of the hymns are, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Shall we at this time sing this beautifully worded hymn, hymn number 28. of the hymnal to affirm our faith as found at the back of hymnal number 738 number 738 the affirmations of faith the apostles creed let us unite in this historic confession of Christian faith I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, we like to welcome each one of you to this uh, virtual worship service and it's our prayer that this worship service will be a very meaningful experience for each one of us and again next Sunday we'll continue with the virtual worship service at 9 a.m. We like to thank God for being with us throughout the past week for his protection that we enjoy for the safety that we enjoy for keeping us sound and safe throughout the past week. We'd like to thank God for his blessings and mercies that oftentimes we take it as granted. But this morning, let us thank God for all his blessings. We at this time also would like you to request to pray for students as they prepare for the competitive exams and other examinations. We request you to please pray for government functionaries and other uh, other functionaries as they take care of the citizens of India. We would like you to pray for our church family, especially those who are celebrating their birthday this week and those who are not well. Please remember each and every family in your personal and in your family prayers. Please uphold the finances of the church and specially request you to pray for the repair of the parsonage and the upkeeping and the maintenance of the parsonage. Uh, if you'd like to donate towards this cause, take an envelope and mark it as a donation towards the parsonage repair and put it in the, give it to the secretary or to me or to Tushra, please. We request you to play, pray for following people who are not well. Please uh, uphold uh, uh, Mr. Martin Lal, Mrs. Uh, Rina Rata Williams, Dr. Cho Phyllis, Mrs. S. M. Manu, Mrs. M. J. Noah, and Mrs. Jennifer Andrew and baby Ayana. We'd like to thank God for the answered prayers for the safe confinement of Mrs. Jennifer Andrews and also for the safe travels that God gave to both Dr. Iris and Oscar Ippen even as they took their long journey from Chennai to Chabalpo. Please uphold following people in your birthdays as they celebrate their birthdays in this week. Mr. Arvind Rao celebrates his birthday today, that is on 12th of July. Mrs. Ranjana Walker celebrates her birthday today, that is 12th of July. Mrs. Sheila Singh celebrates her birthday on the 13th of July. Master Arnav Samuel Robinson celebrates his birthday on the 13th of July. Mrs. Mona Singh celebrates her birthday on the 15th of July. Lieutenant Colonel Praveen Wilson celebrates his birthday on the 15th of July. And Mrs. Rashi Elvis Paul celebrates her birthday on the 17th of July. Even as our loved ones celebrate the birthday in this week even as they enter into new year, new year of their life let us uphold them in our personal and in our family prayers there's one couple which celebrate their wedding anniversary in this week and that is mr mrs shne and mr amit patel celebrate their anniversary on the 15th of july remember this couple in your personal and in your family prayers. Even as we go to God this morning in prayer, even as we thank God for all his blessings, even as we thank God for all the answered prayers, and as we uphold our loved ones into the throne of grace, let us bow our heads and look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most bountiful living and loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning, O oh God. 
thanking you for all your blessings and mercies that you have showered upon each one of us. Gracious God, this morning we are alive and worshipping you is just because of your grace and your mercy for your protection that we enjoy in our life, for keeping us sound and safe throughout the past week. Gracious God, we want to thank you for your protection that we enjoy. We want to thank you, O oh God, in this time of pandemic where the whole world is facing so much of challenges because of the fallout of the COVID-19, where so many have been affected, so many have lost their very lives, so many have lost their loved ones. God, we want to thank you for keeping us safe and sound and giving us life, life in abundance in Jesus Christ. And gracious God, this morning, we praise you, we worship you, O God, for who you are. For you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the only sovereign and living God. We praise you, O God, that you are a prayer answering God. You are a God who wants always heard our prayers and answered them. Father, this morning we want to thank you for all the answered prayer. This morning, O oh God, we want to thank you that you blessed us. And we thank you, O oh God, that you gave a safe confinement to uh, Jennifer. And thank you, O oh God, for the wonderful gift that you've given to Major Andrew and Jennifer in form of baby Ayana. We ask your blessings upon this uh, child and pray that you'd bless both mother and the child and keep them safe and sound. Father, this time we want to pray for the whole world, even as... It is facing so many challenges because of this COVID-19. We commit this world into your hands. And Father, this morning, we pray, O oh God, that you are unable that this COVID-19 will cease and cease forever. Father, we pray that in Jesus' name, you would answer to our prayers and enable, O oh God, that this would stop completely. Father, we pray, especially even as the scientists and the world over is... Uh, working day and night to find a solution for this, find an interdoctor. Father, we pray that enable, O oh God, that at the earliest we may have the antidote and, O oh God, this uh, uh, pandemic would stop completely. We, Father, this time especially pray for all the government, even as they are taking care of the citizens. Father, we pray that you would bless them and take care of them. Gracious God, at this time we especially pray for all the medical agencies, the, the warriors, the people who are f fighting this coronavirus as the frontline worker, we pray, O oh God, that you would bless them. And Father, we pray that you would safeguard them. We especially at this time pray, O oh God, for our own country. We pray for our Prime Minister. We ask your blessings upon him. We pray, O oh God, for all the chief ministers of different states. We pray, O oh God, for our President, the governors of different states. We commit each and every state into your hands and pray, O oh God, that you would enable, O oh God, that they will be able to take care of their people. Father, we at this time especially pray, O oh God, for the church at large. Irrespective of any denomination, we commit them into your hands. We pray, O oh God, that in this end times, in the times of challenges and testings, God, we pray that your church would become a blessing of hope. Your church would become a blessing of love and a blessing of joy and peace. God, we pray that you would bless your church. We especially at this time pray, O oh God, for the Methodist Church in India. We ask your blessings upon all our bishops. And this morning we want to specially uphold our own bishop, Bishop M.A. Daniel to the throne of grace. And Father, we pray that you would bless our bishop, his leadership, and pray, O oh God, that you would use him, his leadership, to guide us and lead us. Father, we at this time also pray for all the churches that are found in the myth, under the banner of MP Regional Conference. We ask your blessings upon this conference. We pray for our Executive Secretary. We pray for all the district superintendents of different districts. We pray for all the pastors. We commit each and every preacher, evangelist, district worker. We pray that you bless each one of them. That God, oh, oh God, in this time of end days, we will be bold enough to proclaim your gospel boldly. 
Father, we pray that you would bless your church. Father, this morning we very specially want to uphold our church, the English Methodist Church, to the throne of Greece. We thank you, O God, for establishing this church. And right through the beginning till now, O God, you have walked with this church. You have blessed the ministry of English Methodist Church. And you have been their Ebenezer, O God. Thus far, God has been our help. And Father, we commit our church into your hands. Especially pray, O God, for the pastorate committee. We pray, O God, for each and every member of a church. And pray, O God, that you would be with them. We specially commit, O God, the elderly members of a church through the throne of grace. And pray, O God, that you would bless this church. That even through their experience, the church would be able to walk in your ways. Father, this morning, we especially want to uphold all our loved ones who are celebrating the birthdays this week. We pray, O oh God, for Mr. Andrew Ra Arvind Rao. We ask your blessings upon him. We pray for Mrs. Ranjana Walker. We pray for Mrs. Sheila Singh. We pray, O oh God, for Master Arnav Samuel Robinson. And pray, O oh God, for Mrs. Uh, Mona Singh. And God, this morning, we also uphold Lieutenant Colonel Praveen Wilson, even as he serves the country. Pray, O oh God, that you be with him. And we also want to pray for Mrs. Rashi Elvis Paul. And we ask your blessings upon each and every loved one and commit them into your hands. God, we thank you for being with us throughout the past week. And even as they enter into the new year of their life, pray, oh God, that you would lead them, guide them, bless them. Let, let this coming year be a Christ-centered year under your care and guidance. And pray that you would bless them. Father, we especially want to uphold Mrs. Sneer and Mr. Amit Patel as they celebrate their wedding anniversary on the 15th of July. Come at this couple also into your hands and pray that you would bless them. We thank you, God, for binding them in the strong cause of your love. And Father, we pray that you continue to use them as a blessing for others. We pray that you would be with them, O oh God. Father, this morning we also want to pray for those of our loved ones who are not well physically. We pray, O oh God, for uh, Mr. Martin Lal, we ask your blessings upon him. We pray, O oh God, for Mrs. Rina Lata Williams. We pray, O oh God, for Dr. Theophilus. We pray for Mrs. S. M. Manu. We pray, O oh God, for Mrs. M. J. Noah. And we especially want to thank and commit Mrs. Jennifer Andrew into your hands. And, O oh God, we also pray for baby Ayana. We commit both mother and the child into your hands and pray, O oh God, that you safeguard them. We also at this time want to pray for Dr. A. Nayak. We commit him also into your hands and pray, O oh God, that you touch each one of us. Enable, O oh God, that they may find complete healing in you. And, O oh God, we continue to be a blessing to you your people. We pray that you would bless them. Father, this morning, even as we wait upon you in the backdrop of COVID-19, pray, O oh God, that you would speak to each one of us. And, O oh God, submitting all our petitions, all our prayers, in the name of the one who taught us here while we pray, we ask this prayer in the most blessed and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us here while we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thy power and thy glory, forever and ever. Amen. The scripture portion for this morning meditation has been taken from Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Then Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command these stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him upon the high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, 
all this authority I will give to you and their glory for this has been delivered to me I give it to whomever I wish therefore if you worship before me all will be yours and Jesus answered and said to him get behind me Satan for it is written you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of God throw yourself down from here for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall hear you up in their hands they shall bear you up and you shall list and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone and Jesus answered and said to him it has been written you shall not tempt the Lord your God now when the devil has ended every temptation he departed from him until an opportune time here ends the reading may the good Lord add his blessing to the reading and to the understanding of his holy word Amen as we wait upon God to speak to us this morning let us close our eyes let us bow our heads and ask for God's guidance and blessings in our life let us wait upon the Lord let us pray gracious God even as we quite in our hearts this morning even as we wait upon you it's our prayer this morning oh God that you would speak to each one of us gracious God in the context of this COVID-19 pandemic when our minds are disturbed our hearts are perturbed it's our prayer that this morning you will speak to each one of us even as we face the challenges of the fallout of COVID-19 pandemic pray O oh God that you would speak to each one of us and your hands be commit all of us in Christ's name we pray Amen friends uh, after the announcement of COVID-19 as pandemic different people in different parts of the world reacted in a different way some very easily accepted all the norms of the government the guidelines they started following the govern the guidelines of the go government but some were tempted to reject it forthright somewhere in the dilemma and so in the month of March 2020 the president of Pakistan Arif Alvi held a meeting with the clerics of both Sunni and Shia community and then he tried to convince them to close all the mosques for the congregational prayers however many clerics rejected it stating that Allah is beyond Corona Allah is more powerful and so we do not need to worry about this COVID-19 pandemic in in Christianity as well Bishop Gerald O the pastor of the new deliverance evangelistic church in Richmond during one of his sermons on the 22nd of March 2020 said I am essential and I firmly believe that God is larger than this dreaded virus called Corona and he completely ignored all the norms and the guidelines of the government and kept his church open and had the worship service until eventually he was diagnosed with COVID-19 and unfortunately on the 12th of April he succumbed to the disease and he died and now his wife is suffering from coronavirus friends these are not isolated events these are not isolated episodes that had happened somewhere there but as a matter of fact we were all tempted 
to take to violate or to ignore the the norms and the guidance of the corona virus we we all we all have gone through these uh, those temptations we have or were tempted to uh, take all these things and we were tempted to violate the guidelines and so this morning i would like to glean through the through the scriptures as to what scripture has to guide us and lead us friends uh, human civilization is probably passing through the most critical juncture of this millennium while its existence is challenged by the emergence of the covid-19 virus corona virus and is encroaching each and every territory and has been growing rapidly we have till now we have received the instruction from the media for managing the corona virus pandemic but this morning i would like to deal on the spiritual and the emotional level because i feel that we also need spiritual guidance in the because the spiritual realm drives the material world and not vice versa friends uh, temptation is uh, uh, is very common to human being temptation we all are going through uh, it a series of temptation during this covid-19 and the fallout of the lockdown these are the times of testings these are the challenging times for each one of us and all of us have gone through this time of testing and trials and temptations and even our lord god has shown and so this morning we will like into scriptures as to see what the scriptures have to uh, teachers even even our lord had to go through temptation and he taught us how to overcome temptation and so this morning even as we face the challenges of covid 19 even as we uh, face the temptation let us see what the scriptures has to taught to us, teach to us friends uh, the passage that i have taken is a very familiar passage for each one of us the the entitled the temptation of jesus christ it's gospel according to st luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 13 entitled the temptation of jesus christ and this we have seen this passage often times i remember in one of the cottage prayer meeting in the during the lenten prayer meeting we had meditated on this passage but this morning even as we face the temptation in the backdrop of covid 19 let us look at this passage in a fresh way and let us glean through the scripture as to what this passage has to speak to us the first part, the temptation that we find in the in the context of covid 19 that we can find in this passage is the aspect of materialistic temptation in the time of covid 19 pandemic the material the materialistic or the tangible temptation in the backdrop of covid 19 according to gospel of st luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 13 we find in verse 13 the devil approaches jesus saying if you are son of god command this stone to become bread if you are son of god command the stone to become bread in other words the devil was exploiting the context the context was jesus has been fa- fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and definitely he was hungry and he desperately needed food to fill his hunger and in this context the devil exploits the situation and he says if you if you are son of god command this stones to become bread in other words exploiting the situation friends the force quarantine to combat covid 19 applied by the worldwide lockdown has 
produced acute panic, anxiety, obsession behavior, hoarding of things and me first syndrome and amplified selfish attitude and that's this attitude is somewhat very much prevalent according uh, because of the COVID-19 lockdown there has been several cases of people hoarding everything they can take and the uh, me first syndrome is at the highest and people do not want to care for others there is an attitude of don't care for others but become selfish and amplified selfish attitudes coming back to the passage we find Jesus quotes from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God if you look at the whole verse Jesus is not denying the importance of bread Jesus is not denying the usefulness of bread but he is definitely denying the supremacy to bread in other words Jesus is not denying the use the utility value of bread but he is denying making bread the highest as the supreme and so friends Jesus is very smart in saying bread is essential but not the ultimate friends uh, if you look around ourselves during this uh, lockdown people have become very selfish and people do not want to help others a friend of mine other day was saying a friend of mine who was uh, very much uh, involved in the philanthropic services serving humanity he was involved in the uh, orphanages and the old age homes but all of a sudden after the COVID-19 pandemic he has closed himself completely and he has shut himself he is not involved in any of these philanthropic services and so one of the biggest fallout of the COVID-19 is that people have become very selfish a student of mine who is pastor in Dharshulla said to me the other day he called up and he said he said sir the congregation member in my church has stopped giving any tight because they are scared that their money would end up fast and so they, are, they only are worried for their future and though they do not want to support any of the ministry and so friend one of the biggest fallout of the COVID-19 is that we are tempted to uh, tempted for the materialistic temptation and we are trying to we are we fall into this temptation the second aspect of this temptation of the COVID-19 is that there is a temptation of exaggerated phobia temptation of exaggerated phobia or what I call unnecessary fear even as we look at the backdrop COVID-19 has brought in a strange kind of fear and panic there is a forced quarantine and this has produced acute anxiety panic and behavior and weird behaviors and as doctor, doctors call it the post-traumatic stress disorder which has become so acute in the people and so even as we look in the context we find Jesus very strongly using a statement from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13 and Jesus says thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name thou shalt fear the Lord their God and even as we look at the backdrop of the COVID-19 there is a fear factor which is uh, uh, which is at the acute level everybody is scared and there is a fear so much and so doctors are very much scared this fear this fear has profound and pervasive in impact on the go global mental health and as billions of people struggle to cope up with the isolated living there is an anxiety 
and spike in anxiety. This has been fueled by the info pandemic, what we call the information of pandemic. We call it the info pandemic, which is at the highest and the media is doing everything to make the matter worse. And because of that, people have become panicky. There is phobia and there is phobia to the ultimate, exaggerated phobia or unnecessary fear. Someone has defined fear as a hot air balloon. You have the hot air balloon and it just moves with the waves. Wherever the air is, it keeps moving. And somehow the fear in our hearts has uh, the fear which is instilled in our hearts and mind is taking us like a hot air balloon drifting from this place to that pier. And so fear has ruined us completely. Dr. Pet Sanis, Greek born uh, uh, doctor who has specialized in general cognitive disorders and dementia sees this as a mental health, as an as a warning sign throughout the population as to every second person has got into this temptation of exaggerated phobia. Every Christian has got into this temptation of exaggerated phobia and unnecessary fear. And this has reflected in their health. And he says, and further Dr. Petnis says, this fear leads to panic and which leads to psychosomatic problems or disorders. The fear, the anxiety, the tension has led into psychosomatic problems and other complications. Friends, the long period of economic instability, unemployment has led into increased incidence of heart diseases. The survey shows that uh, Many people, because of fear arising from the pandemic, like anxiety and effects of social isolation and fear of be becoming mentally unwell have, and affected by coronavirus, have gone into depression. And many times this depression has led into suicides. Friends, even as the world is facing the challenges of this COVID-19 pandemic, we now have a new lifestyle and this has disturbed us. But I feel sometimes uh, we are giving unnecessary exaggerated phobia and fear to this COVID-19. And we, this has uh, uh, almost uh, governed our lifestyle into a different aspect and changed our behavior. The third temptation that we find that we all fall into the trap of during the backdrop of this COVID-19 is the temptation of presumption or, or, and ostentation. The temptation of presumption and ostentation. In verse 9 the devil says, if you are son of God, throw yourself from here and he will and god will command him guarding angels to bear you up in other words devil was invoking the religious feeling of jesus christ he was provoking jesus to tempt god to test god by using the scriptural passage as he quotes psalms 91 the devil insisted him to test god and went uh, when Satan tempted Jesus to dump off the temple, Jesus countered the suggestion by quoting from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16 and Jesus says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Friends, it is very important that we have faith but when you start testing God, it is a sin. In, in Gospel of John chapter 8, the Jews picked up stones to throw at Jesus, to throw at Jesus, to kill him. And Jesus' response was very interesting. He could have worked a miracle or he could have blinded the people, but he did not do all those things. But he, but he just slipped through the crowd and got away. 
we see something very similar episode even in the life of apostle paul in uh, in the episode in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 33 he says but i let it down through the basket i let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escape their hands friends uh, it is very important we have trust hope and faith but we do not start testing god we have to maintain that we do not set up a presumption we do not act in presumption presumption is is driven by subtle pride faith acts in humble obedience but when we start testing god it is like challenging and so g campbell morgan says the moment we do something to prove god we are proving that we are not sure of god i repeat the moment we do something to prove god we are proving that we do not we are not sure of god trust never employs tricks to find out whether one is trusted trust never employs tricks to find out whether one is trusted is trustworthy the one thing one it is one thing to take a bold step of faith in obedience to god and it is another to initiate the same action for one's own person as suggested by satan and so James in his book, book very beautifully says submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he will free from you in other words we have the faith but we do not trust test god or challenge god's omniscience or omnipotence for christian it it is very crucial to decide where the trust and faith end and not to challenge god or to test god for christian every crisis is a call to seek god he is a very present help in times of trouble uh, but the first step is the first step is submission to god we submit to god and then resist the devil it's very important as james says submit yourself to god and then resist the devil first we need to submit to god temptation is not sin in itself rather temptation but falling into temptation is sin and so we find in the gospel of st luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 12 it is entitled temptation of jesus christ hence temptation is not is not dangerous in itself but falling into temptation is a sin and so this morning as we face the challenges of covid 19 there is a temptation that we start hoarding things start gathering thing beside and beyond that we want we can have an exaggerated phobia or we can test god challenge god to protect us when god has given us the mind and the intellect to protect us devil tempts jesus by playing upon his situation of hunger devil uses and exploits the situation into tempting god but jesus was very smart in answering from the verse from the scriptural portion to uh, not fall into temptation in gospel of luke chapter 1 it says even before jesus was tempted jesus was filled with the holy spirit and because of that he could overcome the temptation very important if we have right relationship with god if we are filled with holy spirit we will not fall into temptation but rather the priorities of life will be straight for each one of us in the lord's prayer jesus taught a beautiful things he he said lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil and this in this uh, backdrop of covid 19 when covid 19 is posing so many temptations to each one of us temptation to be selfish temptation to hold temptation to have exaggerated phobia and also to assume that god will protect us without protecting us 
without taking care of us it there is a temptation and so it becomes very important that we do not fall into these temptation as we face the challenges of covid-19 in gospel according to matthew chapter 26 verse 41 when jesus and his disciples were in the garden of gethsemane jesus says a very beautiful thing he says watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation for the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak friends this morning even as we evaluate our lives even as we see the priorities of life in the backdrop of the covid-19 pandemic and the fallout of that pandemic it becomes very important that we do not fall into this uh, trap of temptations and we come out victorious that our lives become a blessing to other let us look to god in prayer let us pray gracious heavenly father we want to thank you for speaking to each one of us thank you oh god for your word which spoke to us this morning covid-19 and the fallout of this pandemic has given us a new normal it has given us scope to fall into temptation of holding things of accepting the me and my syndrome accepting the new norms and falling into temptation of materialistic or tangible temptations covid-19 also has posed before us the temptation of exaggerated phobia and covid-19 has also posed the temptation of challenging god and his omniscient and his omnipotence gracious god this morning our prayers are that you bless each one of us and fill each one of us with the power of your holy spirit that the, as we face the challenges of this covid-19 help us not to fall into temptation posed by covid-19 pandemic and help us to come out victorious so that our lives continue to be a blessing to you and to the people around ourselves in christ name we pray amen friends in response to what we have heard shall we at this time sing a beautifully worded hymn from the methodist hymnal number 271 guide me thou the great jehova pilgrim through this barren land i am weak but thou art mighty hold me with thy powerful hand shall we sing this beautiful hymn guide me thou o great jehova
Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our very life that you've given to us. Gracious God, even as we face the challenges, the temptations that are posed by the COVID-19 lockdown and the fallout of this lockdown, even as we try to adjust to this new normal, gracious God, we want to thank you that you are there. Even as you led your people with a pillar of fire and a cloudy pillar, you will lead each one of us. Even as we tread the verge of Jordan, you will carry us through. And Father, we pray, bid our anxious fears to subside. And O oh God, pray that you would carry us through. We commit each one of us into your hands and pray that you would bless us. Gracious God, even as we face the challenges of this COVID-19, help us, O oh God, strengthen us that we may not fall into temptations, but lead a victorious life to be a blessing to your people. Committing each one of us into your hands, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, shall we receive the benediction. <coughs> the peace of God that surpasseth all human understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with each one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Friends, we like to thank each one of you for joining us in this virtual worship service and it's our prayer that God would bless each one of us as we face the challenges of this COVID-19. I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Simi Charles for keeping us in tune to sing praises to God's glory like to thank Mr. Sopnil Pawar for recording the worship service. like to thank Mr. Henry Peters for editing the uh, for editing so that we could have an enhanced worship service. like to thank each one of you for joining. Thank you one and all. Thank you. <laughs>